it's March 2nd, Wednesday, or actually Ash Wednesday here at the West End Gun Club. It's a little bit after 11.15, out here to run through the NRL 22 March 2022 course of fire. As I mentioned, it's Ash Wednesday, so I actually went to Mass early this morning, or earlier this morning. Um, so I went to uh, Mass. I usually go to Mass on Ash Wednesday in the mornings because uh, it's the, you know, the beginning of the Lenten season. For those of you who are unaware of Catholicism, and for some reason have been never seen, you know, Catholics at Lent. Ash Wednesday just marks the first day of Lent leading up to Easter, 40 days to Easter. And it's just the Lenten season is just the season of like repentance and then, you know, celebrating the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Anyway, that being said, um, I went to Mass this morning. I would have come out to the range earlier, obviously, but went to Mass. Uh, when I took the day off to run through the course of fire, I totally didn't realize it was Ash Wednesday, so that's why I'm out here later in the day. Anyway, um, it's actually uh, relatively warm here. Uh, it's going to be about mid-80s, and uh, not that windy, though. A little bit of a breeze, so it should keep it cool in the shade. Let me go ahead and just go ahead and get the Connex container open, get all the targets ready to go, and we'll set up and start shooting. For those of you with a Kestrel 5700, they updated the firmware about one or two months ago. They added a couple features, but this is the one that's most notable to me. Uh, hopefully this is in focus, but there's this thing called a target card, and you can have like a target card with a set of targets, right? A, B, C, D, E on the J, and you set different distances for those targets. Um, that being said, um, one of the problems that you would have is that you have multiple targets for a given match that you for your target card, and they won't fit like A through J, and, and if you're scrolling through, it's kind of a pain. But what they ended up doing was adding uh, the ability to have multiple target cards. So if you can see here, there's like, the way I number I put it is just number two, and then, uh, sorry, target inputs, uh, sorry here. So you have like one, two, three, four, and those are some arbitrary numbers. I, re I think I did that for like February, stage five, February, stage four. I could rename those, but anyway. Uh, for March, I already put these in here. So for like stage one, uh, in the order that appears in the in the uh, course of fire, I have a 100-yard target, and that's it, right? But I think stage five is probably the, the better example here. So if I scroll to stage uh, target card five, and we look at my target inputs, I have 40, 50, 65, 90. And so that, sorry, 40, 50, 65, 80, and 90. So I have all those ready to go. So when I get to that stage, all I need to do is just scroll that target card, and I have my dope ready to go. Because um, before, with just one target card, I was constantly just pulling out my Kestrel for each stage and then just checking the the uh, the dope for that, that stage's targets. So now that I can have these preset, pre I can um, immediately just scroll through like stage four and just go to that and I have all my targets ready to go. It's only an 85 yard target for stage four. And then if I want to go to stage three, have no idea what that was, 35, 65, 93. So I have those, those targets already set there. Anyway, kind of cool feature on the latest firmware for the Kestrel 5700s. Not sure what version that is. I think I can scroll right here. So is it about version 1.48? 1.48, that's in focus. The first stage of fire we're going to run through for the March 2022 course of fire is going to be March Barricade Madness. 120 second part time, 10 rounds. We only have one target, it's a 5 inch at 100 yards. 
You're going to start standing, rifle and log gear in hand, mag in action open. On the start signal, the shooter will engage the target with one shot each from each barricade from their strong side or their regular shooting side. So if you're right handed, you'll shoot right handed, left handed, shoot left handed. You can take uh, a shot on each of the barricade. Shooter will then transition to their support side, so your opposite shooting, eye and hand and shoulder, and engage the target with one shot each from each barricade. The shooter may choose which barricade to start on, however, all barricades must be used. The shooter does not have to move barricades after their final strong side shot. So after you shoot your fifth shot, after you start off and you're supposed to transition to your support side, you can stay on that barricade, which is a good thing because that'll save you some time. Support side means support eye, shoulder, and hand. Barricades are positioned as pictured, and as pictured, we have the saw horse facing uh, lengthwise downrange, I guess, I don't know, just oriented, <laughs> oriented such that it is uh, sideways, I have another. It's downrange. <laughs> Five gallon bucket, upside down. The, bar uh, the uh, 55 gallon barrel, upside down. The two and a half or two gallon bucket, upside down, and the chair, uh, facing downrange. Uh, this is probably going to be the most difficult stage for people, considering you're basically taking you're you're basically taking a shot from five different positions uh, with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight uh, theoretically eight transitions. Five positions times two, eight transitions. Uh, you know, you got, you're going to take 10 shots transitioning nine times, although you're going to not transition a ninth time because you'll most likely want to stay on that, that barricade that you take your fifth shot on. Um, as far as the ordering is concerned, there's a lot of flies out here, sorry. Um, I don't know. Uh, I have to think about this. I was looking at this after I saw the uh, Course of Fire published, but I didn't really look too deep into it because I still hadn't shot the February Course of Fire. So I'm going to take a few minutes to figure this one out because I'm not entirely sure how I want to shoot this.
This stage of fire is definitely not easy, at least in my opinion. You're moving several times and trying to establish, reestablish your position each and every time, not to mention you're on support side. I tried it twice. I tried it with my bipod and the Schmedium Game Changer using the Schmedium as a front and rear rest depending on what position I was in. I finished, uh, I timed out and I only got eight rounds off. I got, I timed out on my ninth shot here on this bucket. So I, I felt like I was taking too, too long manipulating my bag. So I decided to try just the, uh, the D bag on the Area 419 plate rail changer with the, uh, with the mega bag, I don't have my pump pill. I think the pump pill will be a little bit better for this uh, situation because it's smaller. Because I was fighting this one and I just barely finished with enough time because I was able to just set my gun down without the bipod on all the positions. I was actually using the spigot mount um, for the buckets, although I could have just rested it here just as easily enough. But um, either way, I was just using the forearm attached bag and then this for my rear rest. You got to know your equipment because you'll time out. If you don't, if you're fighting your equipment like I was here, you're, you'll either time out or barely finish. And I, I think I finished with 118, 118.9 elapsed, barely got off my 10th round. Definitely want to dial, I would, with a five inch plate, definitely want to dial it down. I think uh, you don't want to save time, uh, sorry, you don't want to waste time trying to find your target. So I was right around 8X. I would probably go a little bit more, a little less power, even seven. Especially when you're support side, because if you're hunting with your support eye, trying to find that target, you're gonna kill yourself on the time. And it's a five inch plate. You should be able to hit it. I mean, it's not that difficult of a, of a target to hit. It's just establishing a decent enough position, a decent enough uh, hold, getting a good trigger pull and you're good to go. I took a couple sketch shots on the support side with on the buckets, because I wasn't really perfect on my eye relief and I didn't really have a good image. And I was just barely holding on to the rear stock with my hand, kind of just wedging my sport hand with the mega bag on this side as opposed to this side. And just trying to get it in there and hold my, my rear chassis uh, still enough. And I felt it was good enough and I pulled the trigger. It wasn't a perfect shot, but again, five inch plate at hundred yards, 22, you should be able to hit it. So um, you might take some sketch shots, but rest assured that you have a big target to shoot at. Anyway, just practice this stage out at home. I would probably set up like a sawhorse in a bucket or a chair in the bucket and just alternate between each one, jump, move from each one to each one and just dry fire on a, on a little dot on the wall and just try to practice that because you're going you're gonna to get your heart rate up and try to figure out how fast can you get in position and do it, you know, switch sides. You got to do sports side. How fast can you acquire that dot, your set picture and get that trigger pull and then move. So anyway, tough stage. Let's move on to the next one. Next stage of fire is a prone stage called Happy March Birthday Justin Bieber. 120 second part time, 12 rounds. We have two targets, two distances. We have a one inch at 60 yards and a two and a half inch at 90 yards. Uh, 100, 120 points possible since we have 12, 12 rounds, 10 points per impact. You start standing rifle and all gear and hand mag in action open. On the start signal, the shooter will take a prone supported position and engage each target with one shot, alternating from the far target to the near target after every shot. Shooter may not use a rear bag of any kind, just a bipod. Shooter must conduct a magazine, at some, magazine change at some point. Um, the targets must be at least 10 yards apart. Um, they are not here at this range. So logistically speaking, I could space them out a little bit more. I'll probably offset them a little bit, but um, right now they're about five yards apart. Um, granted, I think we can get some leeway for our range because they're at different heights. So. Um, there's at least a 10 foot height difference between those two targets. So I think that's probably good enough. Um, anyway, uh, let's go ahead and try the stage and see how it goes.
that stage of fire is not as easy as it looks. Uh, the fact that you're, you know, you're off offline, you're not, you're kind of swaying from from target to target and in our range, height to height, it adds some difficulty there and without a bag. And some people may not know how to just use their hand to like support against their body. Um, in this, in this instance, I was just using my hand against the ground. Uh, if you're on flat ground though, uh, level level target area, you're gonna want to hold the rifle against your shoulder, kind of like cradle, and then use this as a V-notch to hold that that uh, butt hook or the butt stock into your shoulder. Um, but for flat ground, like we have here, or sorry, with elevated positions like we have here, you're basically just resting the uh, the chassis on your hand and just adjusting your hand uh, to get the necessary elevation onto the targets. I was adjusting parallax. You might be able to get away with it by just ho holding parallax for the one inch at 60, but you know, two and a half at 100, it's gonna be a little blurry depending on your scope. Personally, I dialed parallax. Uh, I thought it was necessary. Um, you'll definitely, it's one inch at 60 is not a very large target in all, you know, all things considering. So you'll definitely want to make sure that you have good parallax on that target. But basically it's about a, a mill hold. I didn't adjust elevations. It's about a mill between the 60 and the 90 yard target, a mill difference. So whatever you dial for 60, then hold up a mill for the 90. Uh, that's pretty much it. Not much else to say here. Let's go ahead and move on to the next stage. Next stage of fire we're running through is called marching to the beat of your own troop line. 120 second part time, 10 rounds. We have five targets. We have a one inch at 40, one and a half inch at 50, a two inch at 65, a two and a half inch at 80, and a three inch at 90. Uh, 10 points per impact, 100 points possible. You're going to start standing, rifle and all gear in hand, mag in action open. On the start signal, the shooter will take a position on one of the ladder rungs and engage the nearest target with two shots. The shooter will transition to a new rung and engage the furthest target with two rounds. The shooter will continue in this fashion, engaging each target near to far with two rounds each, transitioning to a new rung every two shots. Shooter may reuse as many rungs as he or she chooses, but must change rungs after every two shots. So pretty much, um, you're just going to take two shots on the 50, two shots on the, or sorry, 40, 50, two shots, 65, two shots, 80, two shots, 90 for 10 rounds total. Um, ideally, you'll probably just want to switch between two different rungs since you can repeat, you can use the same two rungs. You just can't use the same rung twice in a row. So I would just alternate between the two most okay, comfortable right. rungs that you like. You you it's a pretty straightforward stage, but let's go ahead and try it. This is actually not too bad of a stage, as long as you can find two very comfortable positions to shoot from. I went with the second and third from the bottom because if you go first rung, you're most likely gonna have to shoot prone. If you go the second rung, you're not gonna be shooting prone, so you're gonna be breaking position from prone to a kneeling or sitting. It's better just to go two and three because you'll be just since kneeling the whole time. Um, that's my, my take on this. 
I would probably stick to this mantra. I finished with 91.8 elapsed. So I think sticking with the second and third with a kneeling position on both and just alternating between the two, it should be good to go. Um, you should have plenty of time. If you have like a pump pillow or a big bag for your rear support, it should be pretty dead simple as far as the stage is concerned. Um, anyway, that's it for this stage. We'll move on to the next one. The next stage of our running through is called Hope You Can March In Time. It's 120 second part time, 10 rounds. We have two banks of targets. We have the full KYL rack, one inch, three quarter inch, half an inch, and quarter inch at 25 yards. Then we have a one and a half inch at 65 yards. Uh, this is the bonus stage. So you've, if you finish with extra time on the clock, uh, you finish with extra points. You're going to start standing, rifle on gear in hand, mag in action open. On the start signal, the shooter will take a prone supported position and engage the far target with one round. Then the near targets from large to small with one round each, hit or miss to move on. Shooter will then repeat the engagement in the same manner. It's pretty straightforward. Just uh, large, or sorry, far, then large to small. Large, uh, far, large to small. All right, let's go ahead and run through it. I finished with 67.1 time elapsed. It's a pretty straightforward stage. Um, I ended up adjusting parallax. I dialed uh, for the 35 yard line, which is negative 0.1 mils or down 0.1, and then holding over half a mil for 65 yards. Pretty straightforward. I had the magnification up pretty high. I was actually at 25 to 27 because uh, I want to be able to get to those KYLs. Um, with a lot of accuracy or a lot of precision. And the only issue here is that the KYL rack, it'll move sway side to side. If you hit this target, the next one over might sway side to side. So that'll cost you some time waiting for it to, to stop moving. Other than that, it's a pretty straightforward stage. I can't imagine people have too much difficulty. Just make sure you take good shots with the KYL and you should be good to go. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the last stage of fun. Last stage we're running through is called Tank Trapping the March Equinox. It's 120 second part time with 10 rounds. We have two targets on a single distance. It's a two inch and a three inch at 85 yards. You're gonna start standing, rifle and gear in hand, mag in action open. On a start signal, shooter will engage the targets from large to small with one shot each from the following positions. Prone, left of the tank trap, each tank trap tip, and then prone, right of the tank trap. 10 points for impact, 100 points possible, so 10 rounds. Large, small, large, small, large, small, large, small, large, small. So prone, tip, 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 prone. Really straightforward, Sh uh, not much to say here, except run through it.
it's a pretty straightforward stage, although I did drop around on the third trip tip I shot off of. I just, bad pull. I came off the gun too early when I pulled the trigger. It's got to control that rifle. But anyway, it's pretty straightforward. I finished with plenty of time. I think I reset my time right. Probably had like, I think I had 95 seconds elapsed or so. So I could have slowed down a little bit on this and just been a little bit more um, meticulous and go by the numbers in terms of setting down the, the bag correctly, right? And uh, don't be in too much of a rush to set down the bag. So when you set it in the bag, sometimes you can, uh, what you'll do is you'll be holding the rifle with one hand, you put down the bag and then it'll flip over and then you'll start panicking. So just uh, take care when you drop the bag down. I actually put it on the side as opposed to like this. Um, I don't know, for some reason, I just like the way it feels when it's on its side even though wedging it down like this actually gets it better grip onto the tank trap tip. Um, maybe that's the way to go. Um, I don't know, I just, for some reason, I like the way it feels like this. That's just me. But you just gotta be careful when you're trying to balance it onto this corner here that it doesn't, it doesn't flop over when you're getting in position. So just get it down, place it in this good spot, kind of get it, get it on there, then set your rifle on and you should be good to go. Other than that, pretty simple stage. I can't imagine you have too much difficulty just getting your position to break a good shot and you should be good to go. Um, let me go ahead and start breaking everything down. It's getting a little late. Um, actually, a uh, guy and his son came in here, so I didn't get to use the right side of the range like I normally would to make sure that all the stages are set up where they need to be set up. So I'm gonna go ahead and just laze them now and just paint them. I end up running those the last two stages on the same place I would run the actual, like the first and second stages that I already set up. So. I'm just gonna go out there, collect my targets, but I'm gonna laze out, I think 65 and 85 yards. I need to go laze those and mark those spots for positions four and five on the range. So they'll be ready to go for next month, or yeah, for this month's match, March. All packed up, about to get out of here. It's 15.45, uh, getting kind of late in the afternoon. It's gonna be a lot of traffic on the way home, I anticipate, just this time of day in, in the middle of the week, but it is what it is was able to get through the NRL 22 March course of fire. Sorry, there's a lot of bugs flying around. Uh, it's a hot day, warm day today, so a lot of bugs out. But I was able to get through the March course of fire. Uh, I would say it's about just below moderate difficulty. There's a couple stages that you should be able to clean relatively easily. <clears throat> and then there's that one really difficult stage I think most people will time out on. Um, I anticipate, especially, you know, people who are still learning, they're gonna time out on it because the uh, going from sawhorse to bucket to barrel to bucket to chair and, and back again or whatever order you want to shoot it in that is just it, it it adds a lot of difficulty there and i anticipate a lot of people are going to time out you know but that's just the way you need to keep the course of fire design where you have a easy stage and then a, a difficult stage you know you're going to shoot well on the easy stage how can you keep excelling and getting better so you can shoot well on those hard stages so I would say it's a moderate, just, just below moderate. It's, it's, a, it's a good match for people to show up to um, in terms of the stage, the course of fire. Um, I, I've, last year, I've seen some courses of fire. Sorry, a lot of bucks. Course of fire where some of there were, there were like three difficult stages. And it seemed like NRL 22, the courses were getting a little bit too difficult. And I'm glad they tapered it down. So you have at least two stages that people can do well on, especially if they're new shooters just coming in or they're just like maybe the second or third match. And they're still trying to get acclimated to the whole scenario they don't they're kind of the casual shooter i think it's nice to have those kinds of stages where they can shoot well on and they're not too frustrated that there's like oh it's like three or four out of five stages are very difficult and they time out all the time because there's just so much involved i think it's nice that we we keep nrl 22 welcoming to beginner shooters and at the same time still challenge people who are serious about it you know nrl 22 I, in my mind always need always needs to be that introductory match the casual match where people can come in have fun learn and yet still provide something for you know serious shooters people who might shoot center fire some practice you know a match where they can practice and you know it, it's still worth their time to shoot it if they're like a you know a very experienced shooter so it's a fine balance that you've got to maintain and i think nrl 22 is keeping that going um, but we'll see what they'll do for next year but that being said i think this is a good course of fire for NRL 22 in general. It just it, it embodies what NRL 22 should be. Uh, a couple of easy stages, a very moderate to difficult stage, and then in between. 
anyway um hopefully you got some good information out of this uh run through like i said one relatively difficult stage that you might time out on and the rest of them should be okay uh at least a couple you should clean um but that's that uh for the west end gun club our next match will be march 27th sunday for sunday of the month so if you're in the area and you want to shoot nrl 22 come on out uh, I'll put a link to the website for more information as al along with the practice score stage or the practice score page, sorry, where, you, where we have the registrations online. And we always open up practice score or the registrations two weeks prior to match day. So um, two weeks prior up until the day before we close it out. But we're not really hitting caps right now. Um, uh, we're not hitting the cap or a limit, but I try to want to keep it, you know, in the mid 20s right now. Um, but if more people show up, then we'll try to accommodate that. Anyway, that's it for today, March 2nd, Ash Wednesday here at the West End Gun Club. Thanks for watching. See you in the next vlog.